Hi everyone, it's me, Spring the Fiber Enthusiast, and welcome to the channel. Today is the final part for our fillet shawl, and it is part six. This part is the part of the shawl that is the keyboard. We are no longer increasing on the wingspan, so the width of it. We actually are going to be going straight up from where we're at now. And if this is the first video of this particular playlist that you are clicking on, I suggest going back, watching the intro video, and then starting with part one. I always encourage you to share your makes over in our Facebook group or through, fr through private email or even in Instagram. No matter where you share it at, Please feel free to do so as you will. Just give credit where credit is due and tag me in it. I appreciate each and every one of you sticking with me throughout this whole entire playlist of parts to this shawl. So this part is actually going to work up fairly uh, quickly as far as length of the video because um, there's more repeating of rows where the first whole big section of the shawl was every row was different. So this actually is a repeat for several rows and then another type of repeat for several more rows and done. Um, so basically the concept of this area of the shawl is an outlined keyboard. So we have a row of double crochets all the way around and then keys in the uh, center of that. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that I can do to prepare you for this video. Um, Pretty much that's it. The pattern will be available on Ravelry. It will be written very, uh, very similar or pretty much the same as I do it here in the video as far as blocks and windows. So it will read things like one times block, three times window, that type of thing. And uh, it says in the notes uh, as well what those mean, that a window is a chain two and a double crochet, skip two and double crochet, and a block is three double crochets. So it gives the instructions as to what I mean by blocks and windows, but it is actually, if you were to work from the pattern sitting next to you, it is exactly as I explain it here in the video. Just in written form sitting next to you and you're not watching every single video. <laughs> but I appreciate it when you do. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Every uh, beginning of the row is going to start the same. We're going to do either a chainless start or a, and this is up to you, whichever you prefer, uh, either a chainless start, uh, mock double crochet, or uh, just a chain three, or a chain two. It's up to you. Um, if you want to do a chainless start, you can chain one, turn your work, and then double crochet right into that first stitch. If you want to do a mock double crochet chainless start, you're going to pull up a loop, and I'll zoom in so you can watch me do that. You're going to pull up a loop, put your finger on that loop, and it should be about the height of a double crochet. You're going to wrap that hook around. So now you have two loops on your hook, and you're going to insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through two, and now we can let go of that loop, that very, very first one, yarn over and go through two more. And that would be a mock double crochet. Now I'm gonna stick my stitch marker right into the top of that stitch. And now I can turn my work and begin to work 
along the top of the shawl at this present state. All right, so that is our first stitch. Next, we need to place one double crochet in every single stitch all the way across row 51. So including your start, you will have 310 double crochets. If it's a chain two space, you can either put the double crochet into the chain or you can go into the chain space. I go into the chain space just for ease. It also, to me, it gives it a little bit more structure. And then when you come to your blocks, you're going to place a double crochet in every single stitch. So just go ahead for row 51 Place one double crochet in every stitch to the end of the row. When you get to the end, you should have a total of 310 double crochets, including your very first stitch. I'll be back and we'll begin our two row repeat. Let's begin row 52. Now I am going to start with my mock double crochet chainless start. You start however you are comfortable with. And just get that first double crochet in there. And get a stitch marker on it so I know that is my first and last stitch. Okay, so for row 52, we need to create one block, one window, one block. So that is the first of the first block. So we need to place <clears throat> one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. That will create one whole block. Okay, so here we are. Here's our first block. Now we need one window. So chain one, two, skip one, two, and double crochet into the next. And now we need one block. So we need one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. One, two, and three. Okay, so now we have one block, one window, one block. Now we're going to begin our repeat. Our repeat goes to the end of the row, and you will have to repeat it 25 times. Your repeat is as followed. Three windows, one block. So chain one, two, two, skip two, one, two, and double crochet into the next. There is one window, and we're going to repeat that two more times for a total of three windows. So one, two, skip two, one, two, and double crochet into the next. One more time, chain one, two, skip one, two, and double crochet into the next. Now we need one block. One double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Two and three. And you will repeat that 24 more times. Three blocks and one window. You're going to work that all the way to the end of the row, and I will be back, and we will go over row 53 together. All right, let's move on to row 53. 50, 53 is the second of the two row repeat that you will be repeating. Now, once I get you started on your repeat, um, I will show you 
how many repeats, what rows, blah, 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 all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to turn my work over and do my mock double crochet uh, chainless start to get started. Okay, get a stitch marker in there and we will begin. All right, so row 53, you're going to repeat one block, so one double crochet in the next three stitches. And three windows. So chain one, two, skip two, and double crochet in the next. And repeat that two more times. Chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next. Chain two, skip two, double crochet in the next. All right. So that is going to be your repeat 25 times. So 24 more times until we get to the last three, which is one block, one window, one block. For the next several rows, we are repeating the same overall pattern. So those of you that like a visual, I want to show you what you're doing. So this first row where we have the three windows and the one block. That was row 52. Now we're starting row 53. And as you can see, things are lining up. We have a block on top of a block and three windows on top of three windows. And then we begin repeating that. Block, three windows, block, three windows, and we keep repeating that all the way to this end. When we get down here, we do block, window, block, because that's what we see here. Okay, so if that will help show you how to repeat the rows, we're going to do all the way to row 56. So I'm going to pull over my other card here so that way you can see. So our repeating rows is 52 and 53. Row 54 is the same as 52. 55 is the same as 53. 56 is the same as 52. We're going back to 52 there. And the reason for that is because at this end, we start with one block and three windows. And the other end, we start with one block, one window, one block. So it's a two row repeat, but all we're doing until row 56 is three windows on top of three windows, and one block on top of one block, following the same exact pattern that was the row before. So just count your rows. We have 52, I'm on 53, and I'm going to continue this same exact pattern Stacking blocks on blocks and windows on top of windows until I have reached row 56. Now I'm going to bring over the original. And I was running out of yarn on the original, so I kind of shortened the keyboard section. But as you can see here, we have... 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. And there's our stacking. So that hopefully will help give you a visual until you get to the next section. Now, when we get to the next section on row 57, I will come back and we will 
go over the next set of repeats for rows 57 and 58 will become a new repeating row or set of rows. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and work to row 56 to the end of it, and I will be back for row 57. All right, so we have finished our repeats. So we had 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. Now we're going to begin 57. And as I said, 57 and 58 will be your next repeating rows. So we have um, the keys. We have the black keys and the white keys. So this is where it changes over. And we go 57 all the way up 64. So 57 to 64, we repeat 57 and 58 over and over again until we get to 64. To row 64. Hang on, let me flip the page here. So you repeat 57 and 58 a total of one, two, three, four times, including rows 57 and 58. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with row 57. I'm going to go ahead and create my double crochet chainless start. which is the first stitch of the row. Place my stitch marker. Now we need two blocks. So one double crochet in each of the next six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we're going to repeat one window, three blocks, 24 times. So one window, chain one, two, skip two, and double crochet into the next. And then three blocks. So one double crochet in each of the next nine stitches. It's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now I'm going on repeat. One window, three blocks. Go ahead and continue that. One window, three blocks for a total of 24 repeats. And then I will meet back up with you and we'll finish the end of the row together. Okay, so when you get down to the end of row... 57, we have, we're looking at, from the previous row, two windows, a block, a window, and a block. So what we need to do is one window and four blocks. So all the rest of this is filled in with double crochets. You will need to place one double crochet in each of the next 12 stitches. To complete row 57. And that will complete row 57. Just one window and four blocks for the end of 57.
All right, so that will complete row 57. I'll meet back up with you for row 58. All right, let's begin row 58. We're starting with our either chain or chainless start, however you want to do it. And we're going to start with the same as what we had prior, four blocks. So go ahead and place one double crochet in each of the next 12 stitches to create your 12 or your four blocks. And all we're doing now is going to be repeating what we had on row 57, just in reverse. So whatever it is below where you're working is what it is on the row that you're working currently. If it's a window on 57, it's a window on 58. And then you will repeat, <clears throat> excuse me, 57 and 58, those two rows, one, two, three more times. All right, so we got our four blocks. This is 58, four blocks. Now your repeat is one window and three blocks. So chain two, skip two, and double crochet into the next. And then one double crochet into each of the next nine stitches to complete your one, two, three, three blocks. So your repeat is one window and three blocks all the way to almost the very end. And when you get to the other end, let me find it here. When you get to the other end, you have one window and three blocks, and then one window and two blocks. And that will finish up row 58. Okay, so just follow what you have below on 57 if you're crocheting along and it's a window, make a window for 58. If it's double crochets, double crochet, and then window and double crochets. Just make sure to count your double crochets. All right, so that is rows 57 and 58 on repeat for three more repeats and... For row 65, you repeat row 51, the very first row of this part, part six, which is one double crochet in every stitch all the way across for 310 double crochets. All right, so after you have completed all of that, you have your 310 double crochets across the top of your shawl. The next thing you're going to do, and this is entirely up to you as the person creating your own shawl. But if you would like to add fringe to it, I made my fringe 12 inches long, folded in half to create to create each fringe for each individual window. And I will show you on the green one where they were placed. Move that out of the way. So here on the green one, what I did here was I did two strands, two strands, 12 inches long, folded in half, into each of those open windows. Now, because I was running out of this, this green color, I went and found some white uh, with a metallic thread through it, just like the green has. And I was able to go every other one, every other window, 
with one green and one white, and then two greens. One green, one white, and then two greens. And I was able to do that all the way except for the keyboard area, which is the area we just completed for part six. My last fringe is right here below the first row of double crochets for the keyboard. So the keyboard is outlined with double crochets all the way around. But that's where I ended my fringe was right there. Now you could totally go all the way up if you so choose. Um, I just thought that it looked neater uh, this way and that's how I designed it. So that is finishing up part six and the rest of this rather large, if you're doing it in a light DK um, weight and pretty normal size if you're doing it in a fingering weight, depending on the way that you crochet, whether it's a loose or a tight crochet and what size hook you decided to go with. But I'm going to go ahead and finish up this purple one so that way I can have those really cool thumbnail pictures for these videos. And I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me along uh, this shawl adventure. And I appreciate each and every one of you. Be blessed, be a blessing, and don't forget to share those pictures of your completed work. All right, everyone. Bye for now.